Hey there, community. Welcome to season three of the Providence podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At Godspace, we have all kinds of ways to connect with other people and to grow your spirituality. So be sure to sign up for our newsletter and stay connected with us. Visit godspacecommunity.com and follow us on social media too. Godspace is a ministry of the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky, and you are more than welcome to stay connected with us as well. You can find us at cdpkentucky.org and wherever you find yourself on social media. And now let's get started with our scripture reading and do some reflecting together. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we are at Gaudete Sunday, the Sunday of joy. And since Christmas falls on a Monday this year, making our fourth Sunday of Advent, also Christmas Eve, this is our last full week before Christmas. Sit with that for a minute. I do not feel ready. I also don't feel that much joy right now. Is that how I'm supposed to feel? And can I manufacture that feeling on command? I don't think so. Although I do think people try to manufacture joy and other good feelings too. We do so with good intentions, but sometimes unhealthy methods through substances or food or shopping or pick your poison. As a sister on a vow of poverty budget, I'm not much into retail therapy, which is probably good. But I was reflecting on this after a recent shopping expedition. I was at St. Vincent de Paul, and I found a purple sweater. Now, I am church nerdy enough to like to dress for liturgical seasons. Yes, I am. So I was super happy to find some Advent attire. And happier still, this sweater was on the clearance rack, which meant that it was $1.50. Yes! There's nothing that can make my nunny heart sing more than a clearance item that I can really use, not just during Advent, but throughout the whole winter. Practical and cheap and decent looking, these things check all my boxes. So although my nunny heart was singing, I did have to ask myself, is that joy? I don't think so. It's easy to mistake purple sweater satisfaction for joy. And I think a lot of us are seeking joy in a variety of places and not finding it. Just think of all the movies about the perfect Christmas. It's easy to have high expectations that we should have a perfect Christmas every year. And that's hard. I fall into that every year, too. Not just hoping for a perfect Christmas, but hoping to experience as an adult the feeling of raw joy that I had as a child on Christmas. But I'm not going to experience that. Why? Because different things bring me joy now. 
and I don't think any of them can be manufactured. One thing I can lean into, but not manufacture, is time spent with people. And that does bring me joy. Fresh in my mind and heart are the Christmases of the past few years in which no one could gather. Or some of us did gather but felt like we were risking our lives. Now, I don't take being with my family for granted like I used to. And it's the same with my community. Although I've always appreciated our gatherings, not being able to gather together for a time means that now our gatherings and assemblies are particularly sacred. I don't necessarily have high expectations. I'm just excited to be able to be together with my people. That's enough to bring me joy. The flavor of that joy comes with a hint of bittersweet. Part of my joy in gathering comes from remembering when we couldn't. And also, as an adult, I also know that people won't be here forever. As a child, it was easy to assume things would stay the same. And in my memory, every Christmas of my childhood was the same. But of course, in reality, every one of them was unique. Now I've experienced enough change to know that life is always shifting and moving. There's some sadness in bittersweet. There's also joy. And memories themselves can be that way too. Sadness for times and people gone by, but also joy and gratitude for their presence. And as I reflect on the complexity of human joy, it occurs to me that it's a bit fleeting. We can't create it ourselves, nor can we sustain it indefinitely. No feeling, good nor bad, lasts forever. And in fact, humans are so complicated that we can feel a multiplicity of emotions all at the same time. Hence, the feeling of bittersweet. So, is there another kind of joy? Something that's more than just an emotion? Our reading from Isaiah says, I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul. As the earth brings forth its plants, and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. It seems like there is a particular kind of joy that comes from God. When God is the joy of my soul, well, that kind of joy seems like more than just a feeling. It's something deeper. And how is it realized? It comes from following God's will. The speaker of this passage also says, The Spirit of God is upon me because God has anointed me. God has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. So doing God's will brings joy. And what does God's will look like? It looks like service, bringing hope to others, healing, justice, working for the fulfillment of God's loving, compassionate presence on earth as it is in heaven, turning over the wealth and power of the privileged in favor of the poor and lowly, like Mary sings about in her canticle. God's will looks like a seat at the table for all of us. It looks like peace so deep that it's felt even in the animal kingdom as the lion and the lamb lie down together, described in another passage from Isaiah. There's a gentleness on the earth rather than violence, and there's peace in our hearts rather than resentment or bitterness or anxiety. 
Isn't that what we've been talking about all through this Advent? And ultimately, isn't that what we're all longing for in the depths of our hearts, minds, and souls? I know that's my longing. And where I find my longing and the fulfillment of it, even in little pieces every now and then, that's also where I experience the joy of my soul. How about you? Purple sweater notwithstanding, soul joy can only come from God, and that's good news. God extends joy to us in abundance, just as God continues to call us and call us and call us to service and justice, healing and consoling. God calls us to do our little piece to bring about peace, and as we serve God and each other, we'll find our joy. And I wish you peace and joy through this little bit of Advent. May we savor each moment, even the bittersweet ones. Amen. And now let's continue and maybe even deepen our reflection. What's bringing you joy right now? What does doing God's will look like in your life right now? Do you feel a sense of joy about it? Where is God in it? And what's stirring in you as you enter this third week of Advent? Maybe you could just spend some time sharing about it with God and seeing what God might have to say to you. Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to stay connected with God's space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you continue on your faith journey, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you, and may we all take good care of each other.